Thank you very much, Ivan, for the introduction. Good morning to everybody. Um, I would like to start with a talk which has this bold title, One Click Dictionary, um, which sounds like um, you know a bit of science fiction, um, also a bit of a trick or um, some uh, auto magic. Um, so what what is it actually? What what is a one click dictionary? Click here, make my dictionary. Is that what it is? Well, uh, I would wish it would be uh, like that, uh, but we are still not that far. Um, what I'll be talking about is a uh, one-click dictionary draft, actually. Uh, we are not pretending, and I hope that's uh, sort of clear, that somebody is um, able to do um, publishable dictionaries uh, fully automatically with no human intervention, um, no editing, nothing like that, no. Um, <clears throat> we are quite not that far, and I don't believe that this will ever actually be the case. Um, so, um, going, you know, making a very quick review of um, two papers, one from 2011 and uh, one from 2014. In 2011, uh, Adam Kilgariff, Mike Rando, they reviewed the automating of the creation of dictionaries, and they uh, they assume and they they state basically that. Uh, all the things like headword, uh, uh, headword development and identification of things like collocations and examples and um, you know text type analysis labels um, can sort of be automated, can sort of be done with uh, with um, uh, high accuracy uh, at the moment. And what remains to be tackled are the definitions and word senses. Now um, I'd like to show an approach that also includes definition and word senses. Uh, the accuracy is, uh, of course, uh, much less than uh, in case of things like examples. Um, but I'll be talking about uh, later about um, how much that, uh, how, what is the role of the, uh, the accuracy in the in the um, in the drafting process. In 2014, um, Adam was writing an article uh, about 10 years of sketch engine. Uh, where he uh, also mentions the, you know, in one of the very first, uh, uh, very first paragraphs, that the ten years, besides the automation, have witnessed uh, the near death of dictionaries on paper, lamented by some and celebrated by others. Um, so these are, I think, the two uh, most dramatic changes over the past ten, fifteen years in lexicography: the increase of automation and the near death of paper dictionaries. Uh, I think both of them actually uh, are for good. Both of them uh, enable us to uh, move forward with the whole lexicographic process and workflow. And uh, I'd like to talk about uh, one type of such a shift towards something that I call post-editing lexicography, where lexicographers don't start creating dictionaries, corpus-based dictionaries, of course, <laughs> from scratch, but uh, they start on, a, on an automatically derived, automatically produced draft. Um, if, you, if, 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 we, if I look at what, uh, where did the automation end, or where does it end at the moment in Sketch Engine, then I think that the most advanced automatic function was the tick box lexicography developed already back in 2009, I think, uh, which enables users uh, to go through a word sketch uh, tick individual collocates in the word sketches for these uh, for these collocations then to obtain good dictionary examples and export some of them uh, up to the uh, up to the user discretion into a predefined XML template which uh, you know uh, which can be adjusted project by project and copy paste it into a dictionary writing system. Now while this is um, sort of an advanced automation. Uh, there are still lots of intermediate steps, lots of clicking, lots of choosing of collocates, examples, and finally the very cumbersome step of, of um, you know, copy pasting, which is just something that you don't want to do regularly, and uh, it's just a waste of human time. Uh, what I'd like to present today is, a, is an approach where you start with a corpus, you click in the corpus, and you really get with without further intervention, intervention and uh, dictionary draft that is then post-edited by lexicographers. 
Uh, now, this post editing, I think I should make a small intermezzo here. Uh, is it for better or worse? Uh, I think, uh, and I, I, I think we need to have this discussion from the very beginning. Uh, there are some dangers involved, and I always relate this to the field of translation, where post editing is coined and um, you know is a paradigm that is uh, already being used for some time. And at the beginning, it was really perceived very negatively. I think there were two reasons for that. Um, one of them was that the technology was still not mature enough when uh, post editing was introduced in, in translation as a, um, you know, uh, the, the machine translation systems were, were not mature enough. And the other is that the main motivation really was the push from translation and localization agencies to cut the cost, right? To find arguments why to pay less to the people. Um, we need to avoid both of these, um, you know, both of the, the, these dangers. Um, and um, I will talk about how to. Uh, I mean, the latter uh, can be avoided only through, say, um, good business ethics. But the, the first one, uh, uh, I think there are, um, there are practical uh, arrangements that uh, enable us to exploit successfully dictionary drafting with the current state of the art tools for automatic creation of uh, language resources from corpora. Uh, just, at, just now at Elex, uh, we are launching a new interface of Sketch Engine, uh, which will be demoed and which you can see at the, at the stand where my colleagues are. And um, Michal uh, is introducing a new version, or say officially first version, first public version, um, of Flexonomy, a simple dictionary writing system uh, that is web-based and is interconnected with Sketch Engine. And um, um, all of this work, this one-click dictionary is basically uh, building on top of these two things on the on the new sketch engine interface and on uh, on Lexonomy that Michal was working working on uh, over the past two years. Um, well, the way sketch engine integrates with Lexonomy is a two-way connection. Uh, first, I mean one one way is that you start with a, a with an automatic draft from sketch engine into Lexonomy. Uh, and the other is uh, that you can link back to the corpus evidence from Lexonomy. Uh, the preserving the corpus evidence is very important, and we are aware of that because uh, there is no sense in devising black boxes which yield some data that you uh, cannot look into and that you cannot verify by looking at the actual concordance lines. Um, so we do want to preserve that. Now, the first uh, the first part is what we call a push model, where data are pushed from, uh, from a corpus into the dictionary. And the latter is a, is a pull model, uh, where Lexonomy is pulling data from the corpus, from Sketch Engine. Uh, in terms of the push model, and I think it's the highest time that I started demoing so that it finishes, uh, so that it finishes uh, by the end of my talk, uh, what we do is we derive headwords, collocations, word senses, definitions, examples, and thesaurus. Switching now to the interface, this is what it looks like. Uh, after you choose a corpus, in the menu there is an item called one-click dictionary. Uh, you can choose some settings for the head word generation. You can choose not to do anything like word sense clustering, or you just don't do anything. You push the button and you hope, at least I hope now. <laughs> I'm in a big hope. Um, okay, let's say it will take a while, something like five minutes. Uh, so in the meanwhile, I can continue talking. Um, for the head words, uh, um, we already realized that really th this becomes tricky in the sense that one has to distinguish how to uh, how to choose the head words very carefully. For general language dictionaries, for for um, you know, for, for dictionaries derived from uh, multi-billion corpora, you basically want all items or, um, you know, <coughs> basically all but some. Uh, for domain dictionaries, um, what we do is we stick with keywords and terms, and this is the example that I'm actually running now in the background, which is based on an environmental corpus, uh, from which we, uh, dead words are generated uh, through extracting keywords and terms uh, in a contrastive approach. So we uh, look for noun phrases and compare them uh, to one of our lar large reference corpora for English. Uh, 
you can do all kinds of filtering for minimum frequency regular expressions. Uh, you can build a dictionary just for nouns and adjectives, verbs. I mean, all these things are kind of easy to do and obvious. Uh, and all of the steps actually uh, involve these simple but important, of course, decisions. Collocations are uh, obviously based on a sketch grammar, uh, or, or obvi obviously based on word sketches. And now word sketches can come uh, from a sketch grammar. This is the standard way that you see in Sketch Engine. They can also come from a parser. Uh, people keep asking about it. We actually have parsed corpora in Sketch Engine, where in terms of that we have uh, corpora where word sketches were produced. Uh, using a parser. Uh, however, so far our experiments have always shown that uh, the parsers do not outward from the sketch grammar. That's a very painful topic for me uh, as, a, as an NLP engineer. Um, for languages where we don't have part of speech tagging like Igbo or something like that, uh, we can also use a universal sketch grammar which uh, basically just looks left-right uh, into some uh, window context. Um, now, through the, through the clustering of collocations, we obtain the word senses. Uh, so basically, uh, all the following processing and all, uh, whenever I talk about word senses, I'm talking about a concordance that is defined through a collocation cluster. Uh, for every head word, we first generate the collocations, we cluster the collocations, every cluster we take as a word sense, and for further processing, the word sense is basically defined as the concordance that we can obtain through the cluster, as all the occurrences of the head word and collocate combinations. Uh, now, this is still not work that is uh, perfect and done and doesn't need to be uh, worked on further, of course. At the moment, we just looked at one relation in the word sketches. For nouns, we look at modifiers. For verbs, we look at objects uh, and so on. Uh, Things need to be done in a more clever way, uh, combining different ideas and so on. Uh, but uh, still, at this time, it already yields some useful results, and uh, I and it's generally something that I will be emphasizing through the throughout my talk. This is about building some machinery that makes also development of all these extraction tools easier, uh, easier in terms of evaluation, easier in terms of testing, easier in terms of getting feedback from users whether it works or not. Examples that are obtained per word sense are obtained using Goodex, uh, a tool that has been mentioned at ELEX conferences many times. We score the concordance according to criteria like um, you know, not too short sentences, not too long, senten not too long sentences, not too much uh, function words, uh, not, too, uh, not too many function words, not too many, uh, not too many rare words, and so on. Um, and the new thing here is probably the definitions, though. Uh, Vojta, my colleague, has been already presenting them uh, uh, here, I think, uh, two years ago or one year ago. Um, the key question here is where to find definitions. Um, so far, the best approach that we have is really always look for them in Wikipedia. However, um, a more plausible way, in many cases, would be looked in the actual source corpus that you generate from, right? Because then the definition might be more suitable. The trouble, however, is people don't use definitions when talking, right? So definitions are often just not there. So there is nothing to find. There is no sense to, to device methods for looking that up. So at the moment, the, the primary approach simply sticks to Wikipedia. But uh, again, uh, there should be more work uh, done on this. And finally, uh, we obtain some thesaurus items, uh, as you know them from Sketch Engine, uh, not clustered into different relations. So it's a bunch of synonyms, antonyms, meronyms, hypernyms, hyponyms, and so on. OK, uh, and really, from the point of view of how we operate, uh, every entry is a concordance or a set of concordances in terms of the word senses, and any further processing operates on those concordances. So the system is very modular. Each of the steps where you add examples, you add definitions, you add thesaurus, whatever, the input is a concordance. You add one of these things, and the output is a concordance plus the thing you have added. Uh, in this way, uh, the whole thing uh, that we have developed, the one-click dictionary, is kind of a puzzle that we can very flexibly combine and uh, easily rearrange in terms of when to do the word sense induction and uh, when to look for the examples, uh, whether we first, uh, whether we really first do through the go through the word senses, or whether this is something that that we should do afterwards. 
And uh, this is also important for us because uh, by far this is not uh, something that would be finalized and uh, um, <clears throat> you know not not, uh, not developed further in terms of the uh, in terms of the research on the individual extraction tools. Uh, there are lots of tiny questions that pop up here and there throughout the whole pipeline of the one-click dictionary. I think most of them are obvious, like where to look for the de definitions, when to use explanations instead of definitions, for instance, pictures, and obtain them automatically to, from things like uh, Google Images API, how to deal with words and these, how to induce them, when to induce them. This is really, I mean, the words and these are at the heart of the process. Uh, um, we, we all know that. Uh, Okay, now uh, in, uh, once the draft is ready in, in, uh, in lexonomy, uh, what, comes, uh, what comes now from the lexical reference point of view is this lumping and splitting, fixing and tweaking, and it should be by all means fast and easy. That's our goal, where to go with, with, with lexonomy to make the post-editing really comfortable so that it doesn't happen what happened in the translation field that uh, lots of translators were saying, oh, pff, I can just delete the whole thing and translate from scratch. So I think the, the, the success, in my point of view, is defined as that the, the, the draft is uh, faster to edit than if the lexicographer would just delete the whole and start from scratch. If this would happen, then we have obviously failed, right? Uh, okay, that's for the push model. I hope this is now done. Okay, the button is green. Um, we can open the dictionary. Here it is. Uh, we can go and edit it, and there are just something like 20 entries that uh, that I've uh, uh, that I've asked to extract from uh, because I wasn't sure how long it really will take. If I click on one entry like emission, uh, you see that um, that's the head word. Uh, these are the two words and these uh, these are the collocations. Uh, these are the definitions. So for the dioxide emissions are a precursor to acid rain and atmospheric particulates. Or every single sentence is one definition definition candidate. Then we have the examples in gray and thesaurus items, thesaurus item in red. Uh, the clustering into words is in sort of works here in the sense that uh, this is uh, the emission as a as a kind of phenomenon, and this is the this is the emission as a, as a chemical stuff, right? Um, so and then we have uh, oh yeah and then we have uh, emission as a as a um, sort of no this is the emission as the phenomenon sorry I've mixed that up and this is the emission as the as the these two are the emission of the as the chemical stuff so these two possibly should be merged into one and this one the third one should be kept right and um, now you can go and edit the entry um, you know fiddle with the senses uh, the lumping and splitting needs still to be worked on here but. Uh, I think you get the idea. Uh, now, basically, what do you need to, to be some? Uh, there would be some, you know, join buttons and split buttons. Uh, if you are not happy with any of the parts, the the idea is that now the pull model comes into the play, and you start pulling in data from Sketch Engine and replacing what has been drafted. Uh, all what you basically need to do that is uh, you first configure uh, in the dictionary the connection with Sketch Engine. Uh, which I have prepared for, so I just very quickly paste something like my API key, my username, and I choose the corpus that I want to extract the, extract the examples from in this case, which would be the BNC. I save it, uh, I go back, and now provided I haven't missed anything, when I edit an entry and I'm not happy for, uh, with the example, I click it on a sense, and I have a in the menu, I have an item, find examples. Uh, it's, it looks up the examples in, uh, in, in Sketch Engine in BNC. I choose some of them and they get replaced, right? And this, you know, it still needs really to be finalized in terms of the whole uh, uh, user interaction. But this is the, the, the underlying idea. I first push the draft and then have some efficient methods for fiddling with it uh, so that it's easier than starting from scratch. Right. Uh, at the moment, the pool model only works for examples, but basically we want every single one of the things that we extract uh, from Sketch Engine to be pullable then from within Lexonomy in the way that I've shown. Thank you. And uh, in this way, we basically create a 
cycle where you start with a corpus, you push into a dictionary. This is where the post-editing happens, pulling whenever you want. Uh, besides this being sort of a workflow that, okay, we've implemented and somebody can use, uh, it's also important from the point of view that now we have four different system parts that can be independently developed and improved. You can improve the corpus, do some corpus curating uh, in whatever way, better part of speech tagging, bigger corpus, um, you know, cleaner corpus, and so on. Uh, you can work, we, we can work and we will work on the corpus to dictionary pushing to devise more accurate methods for drafting the end of the entries. Uh, we will work in Lexonomy on the post-editing part to make the post-editing really comfortable. And then also on the pulling part. And every single one of them is an, in, is an independent thing that can be changed in the one-click dictionary, one-click dictionary system without sort of breaking the other. Uh, conclusions, uh, one-click dictionary is ready as part of the new sketch engine interface. Uh, Lexonomy is becoming post-editing aware. And uh, despite there are still, you know, lots of things to be done, like yesterday we have said at the, at the annual conference, a lot has been done, more to do. Uh, I, I believe and I hope that this is a, this is a step uh, towards, uh, this is a step towards the, the era of post-editing lexicography. Now there is a one last slide before I get to it. I, I just when I started to realize a terrible mistake that really uh, is embarrassing for me that my first slide contains only my name and not the name of my quarters, which is a shame. So I'm sorry to you three guys. And uh, it's, I hope, clear that this is a work of many, and in particular of uh, Michal Miechura developing the, the lexonomy, uh, Wojta Kovář working with me on the one click dictionary, and Pavel Rychlí, who is the big brain behind everything in the company. So yeah, once again, sorry. And now I go after answering your questions. Hi, yeah, I was just wondering if you had done any experiments towards bilingual dictionaries, or is it just focusing on... Yeah, not language? yet, but you know, it, it's an obvious follow-up. So uh, in Lexonomy, there are two templates at the moment, one for, uh, one for monolingual dictionaries, one for the bilingual, uh, one for the bilingual case. Uh, now, for the bilingual case, you need a parallel corpora. Um, I don't see any way around it at the moment. Uh, but yes, it's in the pipeline. Yes, uh, thank you. I have a question about uh, this uh, sense induction for other languages. No, yeah. I wonder whether it will work for other languages. Uh, what do you think will be the, the minimum requirements for, for the corpus uh, the system wants for, for working in a, yeah. in a decent way? Yeah. Uh, at the moment, and that it's something, I mean, thanks for the question. Uh, the system is such as language independent, so uh, I've demoed on English, but uh, wherever you have word sketches, uh, it will work, uh, the, the word sense induction will, will work in the very same way. Uh, now, how big the corpus should be, that's a very good question. And uh, here we get into things like, uh, okay, if you have a small corpus, uh, should you use for the word sense induction also information from other corpora or not? I mean, technically, this is of course doable. You know, you can boot at, boot get a small corpus and um, try to do the word sense induction. Uh, if you will bootcut a one million word corpus, the word sense induction will be you know, garbage, most likely. But you could use information from a very large corpus to, to make it better. Sometimes this is desirable. Sometimes it might not be, right? If the, if the topic is very, very restricted and very different from what you will find in a, in a general language corpus. So uh, yes, this is one of the tricky things that I think we still need to think about and come with some reasonable approaches. But uh, back to your question, uh, as for other languages, as what concerns other languages, everything what is there is available uh, except for the definition finding that at the moment uh, is, is language dependent and works for English only. But the rest will be the same. Okay, so I will. Um, I'm very much in favor of this kind of strategy. I'm wondering, however, um, the backbone of um, the system seems to be the well, the different senses, 
Um, if I understood uh, your method correctly right now, you rely on the Wikipedia and um, just um, to... For well, definitions. For definitions, yes. yes. So in, in other terms, the entry I get um, by your um, push method yeah. is um, the Wikipedia definitions plus examples plus collocations. And um, isn't is this, um, I, I'm wondering about the target group, we wouldn't, for example, start with Wikipedia yeah. to edit an, an entry, so. Yeah, I think the, you know, the definitions, I agree with you entirely. I mean, the definitions, that's a, that's a terrible topic, in a way, much more, much more hard to solve than the, than the word sense induction, because for the word sense inductions, I, I see some path. For, for the definitions, uh, I see only the pictures to be honest. And uh, otherwise, uh, you know, because pe people don't use them. I mean, when you collect the corpus, you will not get the definitions. That's it. And uh, it's a problem, yeah. Thank you.